Hello friends, this is Team Super Simplified and today we are here with another video in the lecture series and today's topic is Nobel Prize in Economics 2016. So let's get started. So Nobel Prize was established by Swedish inventor Alfred Nobel in 1895 and it was given away in five disciplines originally, Physics, Chemistry, Maths, Literature and Peace and one more category, Economics was added in 1968 and we are discussing about this category. So uh, these are the two scientists, Oliver Hart and Banks Holstrom who have received Nobel Prize for Economics this year, 2016 and they are jointly awarded for their studies in Contract Theory. So let's understand what is contract theory? Uh, contract theory is actually the study of the way individuals and businesses construct and develop legal agreements. It lays an intellectual foundation for designing policies and institutions in many areas from bankruptcy legislation to political constitutions. So let's understand what is contract theory. But before that, let's be clear with what is contract. So what is contract basically? A uh, contract is a legally binding agreement about who will do what in exchange of what under what circumstances, right? So this is how the contract is. For example, uh, when you take a life insurance policy, how much premium, for how many years you will pay, and in case of any eventuality, who will be compensated, and how much, and in what case, right? So everything is actually written down in the contract. Contracts are everywhere in the modern world, and they can be called the life and blood of the functioning market economy. And contracts have governed the working of the economy since ancient times, as technology improves and organizations become more complex. So the theory and practice of uh, the contract design will only increase in importance with coming days, right? Contracts are most important aspect of the working of market economy. On the spot exchanges of cash for goods do happen, but uh, most economic transactions are actually more complicated than that. There are share market transactions, advance payments, raw material supply clauses in business with a deferred payment. There is a, a kind of understanding between the transaction parties and many times there are formal legal contracts, right? So everything from a credit card transaction to insurance or an employment agreement to rent deals between the landlord and the tenant or agreement of delivery and payment between the business house and its suppliers or share market transactions all of these transactions involve contracts right so but keep one thing in mind that the word contract is used in this research in a broader sense it is not limited to the contracts of the financial world only right for example democracy is also a contract a social contract we can say contract between the citizens and the government Marriage is a contract between the husband and the wife, right? And in history also we find many political uh, strategic alliances between various kingdoms. These were contracts basically, right? When uh, East India Company came to India and sought permission to set up a factory, a farman was issued by Farooq Seer. It was a contract, right? So I hope now you are clear with uh, uh, the kind of treatment we are going to give to the contract, right? So it is it is not only that limited narrow sense of market uh, economy or in the financial world. So it will take into account all the formal and informal contracts, right? So actually uh, contracts have some of the problems. One of the problem is categorized as informational problem, the asymmetry and unavailability of information. The transacting parties which are coming together sometimes face asymmetry of information means one of the party has more information than the other. Okay, so this is one of the problems and unavailability of the information, right? So it is it is difficult to execute the contract properly if you have, uh, uh, if you face this challenge of unavailability of information and also you cannot design a contract properly, right? So uh, since we cannot foresee future, so it is uh, the, all the contracts we can say are uh, more or less incomplete. Then conflict of interest is also one of the causes and different incentive for different parties which are coming together in the contract. So and this is also one of the issues, right? So contract theory is basically trying to address these problems. The objective of the contract theory is to help economic agents design better contracts which will bring in more efficiency in the working of a market economy. So how contract can bring in efficiency. So let's see what is a smart contract with the help of an example. So there is a mother who has to go out of the house for some work but she knows that in her absence her two kids will fight for a cake which is kept in the refrigerator okay but she cannot avoid going how can a smart contract be designed to avoid the conflict uh, between the kids so the mother creates a contract with two conditions condition one the brother will cut the cake and condition two the sister will choose her piece okay so the chances of cheating by one party that is brother are avoided by delegating some power to the other party that is sister right now brother will lose if he cuts two unequal pieces because the sister can select the larger, right? So the desired outcome, which is equal distribution of the cake in this case, is built in into the contract. That is how a smart contract works. It binds the two transacting parties to follow a certain, uh, you know, path in the case of conflict of interest, right? To avoid that particular situation where the clash of interest may take place, right? So this is a smart contract. Now let's see some practical uh, world uh, case studies, okay? So job design and incentives. So for example, in schools, if the teacher pay is too sensitive to observable outcomes, for example, if you reward the teachers for high test scores, then their effort towards hard to measure tasks, such as developing student creativity will decline, 
right so the contract should be designed in such a way that equal emphasis should be given towards developing non measurable uh, aspects of the students uh, uh, profile for example students creativity inquisitiveness right so uh, test score versus creativity this is a problem with indian education system as well so if you see accident insurance what they are telling is if you provide 100% coverage in the case of accident insurance it is nothing but an incentive to be more careless there are, that's why there are uh, the concepts of deductibles and copayments then there's a principal agent uh, theory which they have propounded this actually is applicable in the circumstances where information is difficult to obtain for example in the share market right so in share market uh, the investor is the principal and ceo is the agent investor is the person who puts in his money in a company and buys some shares and ceo is the agent of the company who uh, looks after the day to day working but the investor cannot get day to day working information uh, of the company yes they have some information in the form of the annual reports and all those things but on a day to day basis uh, they cannot monitor what is happening inside right so principal cannot directly monitor the agent section so that leads to a moral hazard what is that agent might act in self interest because no one is looking right so that is what happened uh, in the famous satyam case where b ramalinga raju acted in self interest right now pay packages of ceos how the pay packages of ceo should be designed this is a big question should a ceo's pay only be linked to her own company's share prices not to other companies we might think ki yes because she doesn't have control over the other companies but holstrom says no because share prices can be moved by other factors in the economy if the pay is only linked to the company's share prices the ceo might be rewarded for the good luck and punished for the bad economic factors outside of her control instead it should be linked to the share prices relative to the other companies right so the reward or punishment for relative performance okay and there's another question they are trying to address here is uh, privatization of uh, public services so the question is should public services such as schools hospitals prisons be privately owned or not which way it will be more efficient so they are not giving a verdict that this is how it should be but they are just giving you know some tools to assess what should be in the best interest okay a company that provides a government service has a clear incentive to cut cost but it may do so at the expense of quality if it cannot be measured or quantified prisons in us were privatized some time back but the quality degraded and the security measures were diluted to cut costs eventually after some time the government decision of privatization was reverted back so they are not passing any verdict whether the services should be privatized or should be in public uh, domain only uh, they are simply telling that contracts for privatizing them should balance the incentives between improving quality and reducing cost right so one should not happen at the cost of the other right so uh, a paper published by hearts group in 1997 uh, concluded that services might be better outsourced if the quality declines could be averted through competition as would be the case with the garbage collection or weapons manufacturing etc but if it is hard to measure or enforce standards such as in foreign policy or military operations then those operations are better kept within the government okay so the conclusion here is that contract theory is about giving each party the right incentive or motivation to work effectively together right so that's all guys that's all from my side if you like this video please do like comment subscribe and share and if you have any topic in mind which you would like us to cover please let us know thank you bye bye